Good morning, friends, and welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Kim, and thank you for joining me in the kitchen this early morning. And you can see it's early. I am still working on my coffee. Um, I am planning on making a beef stew for dinner tonight. So I kind of thought, you know, the best thing that goes with beef stew is some nice yeast rolls. I figured I would bring you along this morning. Um, and turn the camera on and show you how I make my yeast rolls. They are a really quick, easy yeast roll. I don't have to knead them for more than about a minute. Sorry for any noise in the background. I have my dryer running and there's a noisy zipper in there. Now, I'm not going to be doing the beef stew in this video. That will be my next video that comes out. I'm just going to start out. I have my stand mixer here. Now, you don't have to use a stand mixer if you don't mind kneading. I'm just going to use this because it is the easiest way, and I don't have to knead anything. Now, in my measuring cup here, I have one cup of warm water, and it's about 110 degrees. I usually use a little portable thermometer. I just have one right here that... I just use it and heat it around about 110 degrees. You don't want it any hotter than 110 degrees. And here I just have some active dry yeast. And I just need a tablespoon of it, which is just about the entire pack. And that's just some Fleshman's active dry yeast tablespoon. I'll put that in there. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of just some granulated sugar. I'm just going to stir this around. And I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes and let it bloom. It's going to get nice and foamy, which shows us that, that the yeast is active. So we'll, we'll come back in about 10 minutes and finish this up. Well, now you can see that it has been about 10 minutes. And the yeast is nice and foamy in there. It has poofed up nicely, so now I can add the rest of the ingredients. So this recipe calls for two and a half cups of flour. I am going to start with two cups. The second cup in, but like I said, I'm going to start with two cups and I'm going to give it a mix and we will add the second cup in just a minute. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of salt and let's get this mixed up and I'm just gonna start out on low just to get some of that flour mixed up I don't want it to go absolutely everywhere turn it up just a little bit And like I said, this is a really easy recipe. You do not have to knead it. You just use your stand mixer. You can knead it if you want, but I just use the stand mixer. It is much easier. No kneading involved. Okay, so that is mixed up pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and add my other half a cup of flour. And I just have this on a three right now. I'm going to let it sit here on a three until it is fully mixed. It'll get all that flour off the sides of the bowl. And it's starting to mix up nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this up to four. And then I'm going to let it mix for about five minutes. Okay, it has been kneading for about five minutes, and I think that is good enough. You can see it took all of the flour that was on the sides of the bowl and rolled it all up into a ball and kneaded it very well. And now I'm just going to turn it out onto my board. And I'm just going to give it just a couple of kneads to pull it together. Don't need much at all. Usually just about a minute. But this is all the kneading time this recipe has. 
which is really nice if you have a stand mixer. So I am thankful I got one many years ago for Christmas. It has been a huge help in the kitchen. Okay. Like I said, I'm just going to just knead it just for a minute. Don't need to do a whole lot. I just want to bring it together. And now I'm just going to, to tuck it under. Just going to form a ball and just keep tucking until we have a nice ball formed. And then I'm going to place it back into my bowl. And here I just have a dish towel and I just ran this under some warm water and then I wrang it out so it's just a damp towel. So I'm just going to cover this and I'm going to let it sit for about 30 minutes. I just want it to double in size so I will come back and show you what it looks like in about 30 minutes. Okay, it's been about 45 minutes. My house is pretty chilly this morning. It is very cold outside. It is like 17 degrees with a 40 mile an hour wind. So with the wind chill, it's way below zero. So it's really cold and kind of chilly in here. So I just let it proof for about 45 minutes. But if your house is warmer, just let it go for about a half hour. Just till it's doubled in size. And you can see how nice this is. Nice and doubled. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to pull this out of the pan. And over here, I just have a 9 by 12. This is just a disposable aluminum pan. I like to use these because I got the nice sides on them. And I just have a piece of parchment paper that I cut and put in the bottom so the rolls do not stick. So I'm just going to take this, I'm just going to kind of keep it in the ball that it was in, and I'm going to cut it into fours. I am going to make 12 dinner rolls, and they may look a little small at first, but they will rise again. So I just cut it into fours, and then I'm just going to cut each one into three pieces. Okay. Grab this out of the way. my pan up here. And now I'm just going to roll these into a ball like we did before. We tuck them under. I'm just going to tuck. Just keep tucking it until it forms a ball. And then I'm just going to take my hand and I'm going to cup it. And we're just going to roll just kind of let it roll in your hand and it will form a round ball I'm just going to do that again just tuck the dough and then just cut my hand it doesn't take much and do not use any flour you do not need any flour. This dough is perfect. I'll show you one more time. Just roll those under. And just cup your hand. Just kind of in a round rolling motion. It will roll it into a perfect ball. So I am going to roll all these up. That is the last one. So I am just going to do exactly the same thing. I am going to cover them with that same damp towel. 
and we're going to let these rise one more time until they're doubled and then we're going to get them in the oven. So here are the rolls. They have doubled in size. It took about 40 minutes. So I'm going to get these in the oven. I have my oven preheating to 400 degrees. Now I'm just going to use my all-in-one air fryer oven today, but I just have it preheating to 400 degrees and they're going to cook for about 15 to 18 minutes. I have it set at 400 and I'm just going to set it for 15 minutes and then I will come back and check them. And here are our rolls out of the oven. Now while they are still hot, I just melted a half a stick of butter and normally just use a brush and brush some butter over the top but I cannot find my brush right now so I am just going to use a spoon and spoon some butter over the top that will make the top of these rolls nice and soft and these will go great with our stew tonight let's put about a just enough to coat each roll over the top. And a trick too, if you like really, really soft rolls, is to put these in a Ziploc for a couple of hours after they have cooled. And that will give you really, really nice soft rolls. Those look delicious. So here is one of the rolls. I just cut it in half and they are so soft and so squishy. They are very light. They smell so yeasty. Oh, they smell really good. And we will have these tonight with our stew and it will be a delicious dinner. And like I said, the stew video will be out in my next video, probably tomorrow, if you are interested in that. It is just a quick, old-fashioned beef stew that I'm going to make, and we're going to have it with some nice buttered rolls. This one, I will probably put a little bit of honey on it and have it for breakfast, and then I will have one tonight with our stew. So, I just want to thank everybody for joining along with me today. And I hope this recipe inspires you to make some quick yeast rolls up. They are very quick, they are very easy, and they taste so much better than the store-bought ones. Doesn't need many ingredients, just a little bit of time. And if you have a stand mixer, it's even quicker. So, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. And thank you so much for following along. And I hope everybody stays warm out there because it is very cold here today. <laughs> we are supposed to get snow tomorrow night. So maybe I will do a video of that if we get a lot of snow like they are calling for. <laughs> so thank you again, everybody. And thanks for watching and have a great day.